After the debacle in 2019 with the Star Wars Retro Collection from Hasbro, where the six figures were poorly distributed, scooped up by scalpers, displayed on crappy card backs, couldn't even hold their weapons, and the only figure we all wanted was packaged with an expensive board game, I put the Retro Collection in my rearview mirror. But with the 40th anniversary of The Empire Strikes Back, Hasbro decided to try it again. They fell back on the same model as before. Six individual figures on on flimsy card backs and a figure Kenner never released, packed with an expensive replica of an old Star Wars board game. Once again, C-3PO and R2-D2 are nowhere to be found, most likely because of the vac metalized parts the original figures required. So we get Bespin Luke Skywalker, Hoth Han Solo, Hoth Princess Leia, Yoda, Lando Calrissian, and Boba Fett. Right from the off, these figures seem to be something of a step up from the previous retro collection. But that could also be because the Kenner originals were slightly more sophisticated than their Star Wars predecessors. That is, until you see immediately these figures can hold their weapons just fine. The blaster grips are properly sized this time, and as added insurance, the arms of most of the figures are made from a more flexible plastic that aids in gripping the accessories. Let's start with Hoth Han Solo. As with the first retro collection, the recreated Hoth Han figure has softer details than the vintage original. His blaster is in black rather than the vintage blue that was common in the Empire Strike back line from Kenner at the time. The Hoth Han figure is modeled after the more common painted legs variant of the Kenner toy, not the more uncommon molded legs version. The blaster accessory, while in a color closer to the original Star Wars figure accessories from the 1978 and 1979 runs, is really, really close to the vintage original in sculpt and size. This can easily pass for original to the untrained eye. I'm not sure how the anti-repro community can justify this even as they crusade a against repros from other providers. The Hoth Han figure here is, in my estimation, one of the gems of this group because he actually holds his blaster well. The vintage Hoth Han Solo never held his weapon very convincingly. The retro collection version improves on this in a major way. The retro Hoth Leia is also modeled after a specific variant of the Kenner version. There were many shades of hair color for the original Hoth Leia, but Hasbro has decided the second darkest brown color Color is their choice. She also comes with the re-sculpted blaster I discussed in the original Retro Collection video, but this time her hand is capable of holding it well. This Retro Leia suffers wide gaps in the leg joints compared to the vintage version, making the figure look a bit naff. The Bespin Luke Skywalker in the Retro Collection is modeled after the ubiquitous yellow-haired variant of the classic Kenner figure. He stands somewhat shorter than the vintage original and with a wider stance. He comes with a blaster identical to Hoth Han Solo's and a yellow lightsaber accessory, this time with a thicker handle than the vintage Kenner original. When the redesigned saber handle is combined with a re-sculpted left hand for Luke, it's a welcome improvement from the vintage figure, where the left hand was used useless and the lightsaber barely stayed in place. Yoda's retro figure is, understandably, modeled after the original release of the figure during The Empire Strikes Back, with the light green color, orange snake, and light brown cane. Not the Return of the Jedi variant of the figure with the dark green skin, dark brown cane, and brown snake. His shabby robe appears to be slightly shorter in the hem than the vintage versions, but also covers his hunched back far better than the vintage robe. His ears also appear to curve inward, more toward his face when compared with the vintage original. Lando Calrissian is another solid entry in this group. He comes with a black version of the vintage Bespin Blaster, which I believe is officially a first for this accessory. Hasbro has opted to model him after the variant of the Kenner figure that is not smiling, and yet, just like the non-smiling vintage variant, the figure is actually smiling in the sculpt, but his teeth just aren't painted onto his face. Next up is the retro collection Boba Fett, who has proven so popular he has turned all the other figures in this group into virtual peg warmers. People can't seem to find enough of this guy to meet demand. He's modeled after the more commonly found version of the figure and not the more scarce versions like the Taiwan or Tri-Logo Boba Fetts. Unlike the other figures in this group, his arms are a more rigid plastic closer to the Kenner version material. He holds his weapon well, a black Imperial blaster, and he looks good. 
There's not a lot to say here except that, once again, this figure and this blaster are very close to the vintage originals. The easiest tell for Boba Fett is the lighter red color of the jetpack rocket versus the darker color of the vintage version. Otherwise, you'll need to make sure to read those copyright marks if you have hang-ups about reproductions. Lastly, we have the new figure in this group. And like Tarkin, it's a figure that Kenner never made. Snowspeeder Luke. I'm glad to finally see a snowspeeder pilot in the Kenner style. I don't like the fact that he's on a card back that shows him with his helmet off when it doesn't come off at all, and the simplicity of choosing a different photo would have solved that problem. But it isn't the first time the Kenner line did crap like this with Luke Skywalker figures. I'm not happy about this figure being packed into a board game nobody wants. That's a scam on Hasbro's part to force people to pay more for a little thing inside that they want. I think Hasbro missed an opportunity here to give us a pair of pilots, Luke and Dak. Forget the card backs. Just give us both pilots for the vintage Kenner Snowspeeder. Give us two figures since you're forcing us to buy a board game. Would have been cool if the previous board game came with Tarkin and Wedge, especially considering the game showed the fighter battles on the box art. It's also strange to me how they opted to give this Luke a blue lightsaber accessory along with the grappling hook gun. If they were trying to truly mimic the Kenner Empire Strikes Back experience, going so far as to give us the early style Yoda and a yellow lightsaber with Bespin Luke, wouldn't a yellow lightsaber with Snowspeeder Luke have made the most sense from a lost nostalgia perspective? However, if you want to make that color correction, why not also give Bespin Luke a blue saber accessory? It's a weird choice on their part. Because of the grappling hook gun provided, this figure makes the most sense for my display when combined with the vintage grappling hook belt from the accessory pack so he can hang under the AT-AT. Given the lack of a DAC figure, putting him inside the snowspeeder would just make him invisible most of the time. The Empire Strikes Back retro collection is a big step up from the previous attempt last year. However, it's unlikely Hasbro is going to commit to a substantial run of vintage-style figures like this. So if you're already a vintage collector, the Snowspeeder Luke is the only enticement. The rest of them have knockaround appeal to keep mileage off your originals, but that's about it. I'd love to see Hasbro do a full vintage run of Kenner Star Wars figures again, including characters we never received. The sales of these retro collections seem strong enough to make a case for it but I just don't have any faith that Hasbro would show an interest. Hope you enjoyed that, everybody. If you want to see more videos about The Empire Strikes Back, you can watch our Bespin Luke feature here. And if you just want to learn more about Star Wars toys, you can watch our Star Wars Follies playlist here. And now I'm going to figure out how to get this thing working.